Hi everyone! Today I'm going to talk about the photo books I use as a textbook. Photo books done by the pros can just be something to admire. But to me, it's like a textbook. I try to study them and analyze what it is that attracts me. Not only am I drawn to the color and well-balanced composition, but I also wonder about what lens do they use or what distance would it be from the camera to the subject. What I want to understand the most is the viewpoint of the photographers. I try to input where one's eyes are aimed at and actually try to shoot in the same manner. It's like reading a textbook and drill practice. I suppose it's a kind of simulation of thoughts. You may think it's just a form of a copycat, but I truly believe that in learning process, whether in fine arts, cooking, or music, unless you are born with a natural gift. One should understand the fundamentals, its authenticity and practice by tracing the best examples possible, thereby creating originality. For this reason, I'd like to be well grounded with a prose viewpoint. Okay, so I'd like you to see some of my favorite photo books. All the books will be linked at the description box. This is the first one. A Photographer Found by Vivian Meyer. I'll be introducing another book of hers later. It consists of full volume 288 pages, and it was the first photo book I purchased. She was a nanny, just taking photos as a hobby. After her passing, a young man discovered an enormous collection of films taken by her, and she gained her fame from there. I think it's very mysterious. I learned of her existence through watching the documentary film on her and was completely drawn to her world of street photography. Up until then, I was only taking pictures of touristic sites or places of seasonality. I thought it was where I could capture a good photography. But after having seen her photos, I realized that simple depictions of everyday life have tremendous impact, and that these were the photos I'd want to take. By the way, the name of the documentary film is called Finding Vivian Meyer, and can be seen at the YouTube movie. I'll link it at the description. The book consists of many square-shaped monochrome photos. There are some color photos as well. The second one is again done by Vivian Meyer, and it's titled Self-Portraits. Obviously a collection of her self-portraits. When you think of self-portraits, you'd think of setting the camera in front of you and shoot it with a self-timer. Well, this isn't the case here. They are comprised of portraits that are either a shadow of herself or a reflection of her image projected in an object or captured in the mirror. It may sound like a basic technique, but the composition of how she put herself in the frame is absolutely brilliant. The third one of Vivian Meyer is called The Color Walk. This is also full volume with 240 pages. I happened to come across her exhibition during my trip and bought it. As the title suggests, it's all comprised of color work. The style and the viewpoint are the same as the previous work shown, but by adding color, it creates reality, offering a glimpse of the past. Of course, the colors are brilliant. Okay, so we go on to the great master of the color, Soul Lighter. The book is early color. It's more than a textbook for me, rather it's a Bible. The photos within the book are postcard size. In 2017, I saw an exhibition of Soul Lighter in Tokyo, and the photos were also very small. I wished they were larger, so I could study them more. Apparently, 
he preferred telephoto lenses creating compressed atmosphere. Atmospheric difference in using telephoto lenses passed as opposed to using street photography oriented 35mm lens. Encountering the works of solar lighter led me to open my eyes to street photos using middle telephoto lenses. I was so impressed with his words. You do not have to run to far away places. He's been taking great photos around his New York neighborhood for years, and that alone proves that you don't have to go to touristic sites. I'll link his documentary film in the description. Now I'd like to introduce Early Black and White, again by Soul Lighter. Not only is he a master of color, but he is also great in monochrome. It's composed of two sets of books, and one is monochrome interior, and the other is monochrome exterior. Personally, within the book, I like the photos of Halloween taken in 1952. Next is The Last Resort by Martin Parr. There are many photos that attract me because he creates peculiar world with certain sense of humor. He does so by using a strobe during the daylight, creating a usual circumstance of everyday life making it seem very unusual. Having reviewed the book, it urged me to take photos at the beach. I haven't used a strobe in the daylight since it requires quite a bombastic setting, but I will challenge it in the near future. His latest book, titled This by Selfie, focuses on people taking selfies with their smartphones, and this also is humorous and is in my shopping list. I get very long-winded with admired photos and will end up uploading a very long video, so from here on, I'll try to simplify my comments. Next is Harry Gouillard. Very difficult to pronounce his name. His colors are very bright, and the utilization of negative space is so cool. Perhaps done so by the use of black, or should I say the use of shadow. These are the elements that have attracted me and led me to buy this book. He shoots at countries such as Egypt, Morocco, Syria, that are unfamiliar and are fresh to my eyes. Next is Modern Color by Fred Heltok. Sadly, he passed away this year. As the title suggests, it is comprised of 300 pages of colorful street photos. He sometimes used the telephoto lenses that created a sense of compression because I want to recreate similar feelings as his. I sometimes place this book on the side as a reference during my Lightroom editing process. Okay, next, Ernst Haas. Color correction. I believe it's pronounced Ernst in Austria, where he is from, but probably pronounced Ernest in English. It consists of 200 pages. There are many photos which are very elegant, and I was fascinated by them. But some are difficult to understand for an ordinary person like me, because they are too artistic. Okay, next. This one is Dr. Blankman's New York by Todd Papajoj. Bought it on an impulse at the bookstore. It consists of magnificent photos of New York, with its overall undertones that seem like a scene from a movie. It makes me want to go to New York and shoot. Of all the photo books I've bought, there is one that I regretted buying, which is this one. Sidewalk by Georgi Pinkasov. I saw the book online, liked it, and had bought it through Amazon. I waited for almost two months, as it was shipped directly from abroad. When it had finally arrived and have opened the package instantly, I became quite disappointed. The book had this ray skin look-alike cover, which itself presented high quality. The publisher seemed to want to make the book itself an artwork by paying particular attention to quality of paper. I get it. It met my expectation. However, it only contained 25 photos. And unfortunately, I didn't prefer the choice of paper they so much cared for. 
It was my mistake not to check the number of the pages, but I was still disappointed. To me, the quality of the paper and the quality of the printing are very important. And not only do I admire watching the photos, but do I also appreciate touching the surface of the prints. It's like absorbing through the eyes and feeling through the hands. Okay, this is it for today. Please press good if you like my video and subscribe my channel and Instagram. See you again at the next video. Bye!